My next guest is truly a gift from the Lord to the church, to the body of Christ, and to the, to the nation of America and the world. He is the founding president of Leadership Freedom and Freedom Star Media. He's, a, he's an executive coach now and a corporate consultant with Fortune 500 companies. He's the author of an amazing book called Leading with Honor. And he knows something about that. You'll find out in a moment. He was, his aircraft was shot down and he was a POW for five years during the Vietnam War. He was in what, was, what is known as Hanoi Hilton. He was a POW for five years and experienced uh, an, an amazing encounter of God's protection, God's divine deliverance. Hardly anybody survived, and yet he survived because of God's hand upon his life. He was awarded two silver stars, the Legion of Merit, the Bronze Star, uh, and with valor, the Purple Heart and POW Medal for his service in Vietnam. Also, four Air Force Commendation Medals, four Meritorious Service Medals. Would you welcome with me Colonel Lee Ellis? Thank you so much. For Thank you. We honor you. Thank God for you. Thank you. Thank you. Colonel, it really is. Um, it, first of all, I, I know I speak on behalf of, of, all, of all our audience and, and around the country and around the world, really, who appreciate the sacrifice that you made and so many of your brethren who made the sacrifice and many who made the ultimate sacrifice. But you're alive and God protected you. Tell us a little bit about your experience and how, you, how you're here today. I grew up in a Christian home and a farm in Georgia. I plowed mules, but I always wanted to fly airplanes. So three, three days after I graduated from the University of Georgia, I was in flight school in Valdosta, Georgia. 53 weeks later, I had my assignment, which said F-4 Phantom, Pipeline Southeast Asia, which means I was going to war as quick as they could get me trained. I'd grown up in a Christian home, and when I left to go off to war, the last thing we did in our family was to sit down and pray. My mom, my dad, uh, my brother was already married and gone, but the three of us sat down and prayed. And I just always had grown up knowing that God had his hand on my life. He had blessed me and carried me through so many situations. Uh, I'd already had airplanes, uh, engines quit a couple of times, so I knew that God was there with me. Engines quit in well, air. We had two engines in the airplanes I was flying, and yeah. I had twice I had one of the engines to quit wow. in a fairly critical stage of flight and made it back okay. Amen. So I went to war as a fighter pilot flying combat missions over South Vietnam, North Vietnam, and Laos, but mainly over North Vietnam. And I had over 53, I was on my 53rd mission. My airplane was hit and it blew up. And fortunately, uh, unfortunately, it didn't fly anymore. Uh, fortunately, I wasn't injured in that and I was able to eject. My partner, there were two in the airplane. We both ejected, went out, got a parachute, but we came down right in the arms of the enemy. They wow. caught us right as we came down. Wow. They caught my buddy and they were 20 yards from me. And uh, that started uh, a new era in my life. That's the worst nightmare you can have is when you are captured over enemy territory. You know, it's your worst personal nightmare and your professional nightmare. So it was quite an experience. But those next two weeks till I got to Hanoi, we were bombed and strafed three times by American air power. And fortunately, we were able to get in bomb shelters or uh, foxholes, and I wasn't hurt. But more frightening for me than that was three times the local populace tried to kill me by cutting off my head with their rice-cutting knives or sticks or bricks or whatever. They came after me in a riot. And the militia, probably a staff sergeant, was in charge of taking me north. He got his squad, and they protected me as though I was gold. Wow. It was amazing. So over and over, that's six times right there. And then there were a couple other times when things happened. But I just saw God's hand on me protecting me. You know, I hardly got, I had a couple of bad cuts on my neck and my chin and my lip was cut through. But other than that, and, you know, some sore back and neck. But I didn't have any broken bones. And uh, it just was so God, the incredible things that happened to me in those two weeks of how God's hand was there protecting me. Uh, the two weeks you describe yeah. was preceded 
the five years, then you experienced yes, five years exactly. as a POW. What, right. what happened between those two weeks and, and the five years? What happened? Well, we were traveling north to get to Hanoi because they had orders to bring the, the pilots that they captured to Hanoi. We were going to be uh, like hostages, bargaining power, and they really also wanted to use us for propaganda. They always were trying to either get us to willfully make propaganda or to torture us to make propaganda, anti-war propaganda. Now, we defended people's right in this country to protest the war. We told them this is the kind of country we are. We, are. we, can, we can protest what our government is doing in our country, so we defend that. But uh, they wanted us, us to make propaganda, and that was not in our line of business. Right. Uh, we were being loyal to our code of conduct. And we formed a very strong military team in the, it, using covert communication there in the POW camps. And we had some fantastic leaders. And in this recent book that I've written, I've tried to document those wonderful, courageous leaders that we had and what they were doing and how it made such a difference for us, the courage. And I think the message for America and the world really right now, the message for Christians is have courage. Good. Do the right thing. And I think that was what uh, the message I came home with for myself was to always try to do the right thing, have the courage. I say, lean into the pain of your fear to do what you know is right. And you can't go wrong when you do that. S say that again, Colonel. That's so good. Please, um, please repeat that about leaning into, leaning into your fear. Tell us that again and, and expound on that for us. Yeah, lean into the pain of your fear. The things that feel unnatural or scary to you, you need to just look at it and say, what is the right thing to do? And then move toward it to go do what you know you ought to do. That's courage. Leaning into the pain of your fear to do what's right, even when it doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel so safe, doesn't feel natural. Now, let me give you an example. Uh, there are a lot of men who are shut down emotionally, and I was one of those and still struggle with that some. For I know men who, to put their arms around their 13-year-old daughter and give her a hug and say, I love you, honey, that is a terrifying act for many men. And uh, I've had uh, ladies who work for me that told me my dad never told me he loved me. Well, because he was afraid to. What other reason could there be? So what we need to do is lean into the, our fears, go do what's right. And if that's uh, an emotional fear, I've actually coached CEOs how to give positive feedback. And uh, I said, is this person doing a good job? And they said, yeah. And I said, well, don't you think you should tell them so and you appreciate it? Well, I, maybe so, but that doesn't feel natural to me because I don't need that kind of uh, reinforcement and affirmation. When I said, well, most people do. Uh, I think you do too. You just get in a different way, but most people do. So I actually coached them to write a script and go down to someone's office and say, you know, Bill, that retreat you organized last week that we did off-site, that was really well done. Thank you so much. And uh, just turn around and walk out of the office. That's all you need to say. Go in and thank him and tell him what a great job he did. And then turn around and go out. And had him write out a script to go do it because it was so fearful for him. So uh, there are, we all have our fears. We all have our doubts. We just need to see what they are and see if they're legitimate. Obviously, fear can save your life sometimes. So those are, there are some legitimate things that we need to be concerned about. But most of them are really, uh, we're just scared, we're ashamed, we're tender in an area and we don't want to go there. And sometimes that's where we need to go. And, and Colonel, most fears really are, are barriers that are simply yeah. trying to to hem us in, aren't they? Yeah, trying they to are. pin us down and, and keep us paralyzed from making progress. Absolutely. How do you take that first step? How does a person, no, most of most people watching, they don't know what it's like to have courage as a POW like you did, but but they, they need the courage to take the first step mm -hmm. in their family, mm -hmm. take the first step in mm -hmm. dealing with their finances, dealing with uh, a confrontation right. in an emotional relationship. Right. What, what's the first step when somebody's dealing with something? I think you have to make a commitment, a conscious decision of what you're going to do. And then you move toward it. Yeah. And just open your mouth and do it. Yeah. And let it come out. That's good. Uh, and it's amazing how freeing that is. You know, in the Bible, the word fear is in there so many times. And Jesus is saying over and over, you know, fear not. The angel said, fear not, fear not, fear not. And yet, that's what usually grips us and shuts us down. 
from doing the things that we ought to be doing to move closer to God, to move closer to our family, to our husbands, our wives, our children. Uh, we need to step past that fear and, uh, and let love yeah. replace the fear. Love, yeah. is the, love is the antidote for fear. That's right. And if we really, if we could, and this gets to another area that I'm really spending a lot of time on uh, in the last few years, and that is emotions. And of course, love is the strongest emotion. And until we really, you know, I always knew God loved me. I mentally knew that. I accepted that. I actually believed it and had faith in it and operated on it. But I can't say that that many times I really felt God's love deep in my heart, deep in my emotions. And uh, the, one of the great, probably the greatest thing I've learned to do in the last 10 years is to allow God, just to open myself up to receive God's love in deep in my emotions and to hear him validate me that he loves me, that I'm special to him. He's made me the way I am just because that's the way he wants me. And uh, really, he's talking about we have to let God love us. Yeah, we have, we have to. to. We, 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 I think so many Christians try so hard to love God. Right. And the struggle with loving God is that you can't love him without first being loved by him. And you need, you need to really let him love you first so Absolutely. you can love him back, don't it you? It is. And see, that takes a lot of courage to let God love you because you're afraid that if you get close to him, he's going to judge you and shame you and all that. And what he's really seeing is this wonderful child of mine that yes. made just like I made him. And I just, he just wants to, to hug us. Yeah, amen. The and, Bible uh, calls him... Abba, Father, right, Daddy, right. Daddy, Father. And, and Jesus started out when they said, Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus said, say, our Father. Yeah. And he wants to be our Heavenly Father and, yeah. and heal us everywhere we're hurting. Colonel, you spent five years in, these, in this prison camp. You were, you were a prisoner of war in Vietnam. We opened the show up talking about how how Joseph was a prisoner mm -hmm. in, in Potiphar's house right. in Egypt. He became a slave as his brothers sold him into slavery. It was God's presence that, that made a difference in his life. Mm -hmm. Can you identify with that? Was, did oh, you yeah. sense God's presence? Oh, Tell yeah. us about that experience as a prisoner of war. Well, when you are locked up in a jail, a six and a half by seven foot cell, with three other guys and the enemy is coming after you every day you're cold in the winter and hot in the summer and you don't have much food uh, you know that you're out of control you have very little control you're depending on your enemy to feed you and keep you alive and it just brings that much more how much we depend on God and how I could depend on him uh, so that was very important. And of course, a lot of time to pray and reflect. Uh, I had a lot of regrets about things. I hadn't really done that many bad things, but there are a lot of bad things I'd done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, that I had to repent of and reflect on and deal with. But I also grew a lot during that time period. You know, like uh, one of my uh, cellmates who was a Marine guy, he had this expression, pain purifies. And uh, there's a lot of truth in that. You know, when we go through adversity, we have the opportunity to grow much better, actually, than when times are good. So we were in a lot of adversity, and it was a great time of growth. I did a lot of maturing. Uh, Let me that, ask you this, yeah. Colonel. What, what, when, you were, um, when you were imprisoned for five years mm -hmm. as, a, as a prisoner of war in Vietnam, Colonel Lee Ellis is with us. And, and Colonel, were you tempted to become bitter at God, angry, mad. What, what, what kind? What, what kind of emotions went through your heart and mind? I really was never bitter at God. I, I, you know, I really believed the Bible. I, I had read the Bible growing up. And Amen. Considered it all joy, my friends, when you're going through tough times. Wow. Uh, because. I, 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 I believe. I believe this was part of God's plan. Uh, I did have some bitterness at our enemy captors from time to time. Most of them not. They were soldiers. But I guess the communist thing, you know, where they're not telling the truth and uh, trying to force us. They were actually torturing guys in our camp. The summer of 1969, they tortured over half the guys in my camp to sign a statement saying they had received humane treatment. Mm -hmm. Now, think about that for a while. 
that's the kind of culture and society that the communists promote. So uh, that was difficult, very difficult. But we had two years toward the end, thanks to the American people who wore bracelets and uh, wrote letters to the Paris uh, diplomats, the communists there, and complained about our treatment. They actually changed our treatment, and the, the wives and families at home at home were writing letters over there, and Ho Chi Minh died. And those two things came together, and the new leadership decided they didn't like the bad publicity. Mm -hmm. So they changed our treatment in 1969, the early 70, and we, went, we had two years of more like live and let live. So we had time to heal, uh, to turn loose of that bitterness, and that's one of the, my last chapter is Free the Captives. And it's really me coming home, but it, more than that, it's really about freeing the shackles that we're all in, that we're all locked into the bondage that we're in, the things that we believe that aren't true, the things that we believe about ourselves. Oh, that's that, good. Uh, that uh, that's the freedom we need. That's so true. Yeah. Well, you have to have freedom in inside, yeah. and yeah. freedom outside will come yeah. as a result of that. And you 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 have some life and leadership lessons that you learned in uh, Vietnam as, as a POW. What are, what are a couple of those life lessons, those leadership lessons that you learned? Yeah. I think you have to start with yourself. Know yourself and be yourself. You know, God wants us to be who we are and to be good, okay with that, to develop it all along, but to be, be okay and understand, really know who you are, not try to be like somebody else, not be in, envying somebody else. So be authentic, know yourself. Uh, guard your character. I think you always have to be on guard. I don't care how committed you are. If you don't recommit regularly and have accountability, uh, you can get in trouble. Uh, I think that one of the biggest ones uh, we've been talking about is confront your doubts and fears. Confront your doubts and fears. Because if you confront them, lean into the pain and go do what's right, you're going to come out ahead. Uh, be resilient. Bounce back. We're all going to get knocked down. We have to learn to bounce back and uh, you got to have that team around you, though. You can't, you cannot grow, you cannot bounce back alone. Not very well. The SEALs don't fight alone. The Special Forces don't fight alone. We all have to learn to uh, have that team around us that can encourage us. I have a team of three guys, and then my wife, and then some other friends. But I have this team around me that's always helping me to... Uh, to encourage me even in, in those difficult times and help me bounce back. So that's very important. Well, that's so good. And, and I think uh, I think so often we, ju we, just, we, just have a, we just have a moment, but I want to just recap. One of the most important things I think you said was because so often we want to try to protect our lives and preserve our lives and, and keep ourselves from ever coming into having trouble. But you said in the midst of your trouble, you knew the Bible and yeah. you knew to count it all joy yeah. when you encountered various right. trials. Right. And that is so powerful. <laughs> Colonel Lee Ellis, thank you so much for thank being you. with us. I just, we, once again, we honor you right. on behalf of Paul and Jan Crouch and the TBN right. family. We're right. so grateful for your service right. to this country right. and the freedom that you've helped bring and the sacrifice that you made. And we just welcome Thank you back. You. We're so grateful that you, got, that you made it through, that you've learned so many things and you've been able to share them with us, a few of those things tonight. Would you welcome again and thank God again for Colonel Lee Ellis. Thank you so much, Colonel. We honor you. We honor your sacrifice. And we honor all of the soldiers and all of the veterans and all of those that have just paved the way for our freedom in this nation and around the world. We're so grateful.